there's a lot of technical challenges when you make a, an IMAX film of this nature, when you want to be in the wild uh, with animals in, on location. And uh, each location has its own challenges. In the, in the case of elephants, um, we were able to get our big IMAX uh, film cameras pretty close to the elephants because they were, um, they were either orphans or ex-orphans. They were used to people. They weren't going to stampede and knock us over. And that was always the danger is how do we get out of their way. Um, but it was relatively easy to get an a, a camera close enough to the elephants to make a really good picture. In the case of orangutans, it's, it's more difficult because their preferred habitat is essentially 30 meters up in the top of a tree. And so to get our cameras up to their height to really show their world was where we had to basically invent and come up with a, a new type of IMAX camera. And it was a lightweight digital based camera versus a film camera. And it was built by the IMAX uh, technicians and by the crew that we hired um, in order to, to be able to go up on a crane arm. And so, you know, there's, there's the challenge of getting a camera up high. We, we put it on huge big arms that you can operate from the ground. Um, but also the challenge of getting that equipment around Borneo because Borneo is a very um, primitive location to work in in terms of infrastructure. Uh, Broody's uh, release sites were miles and miles on the nearest roads, sometimes up rivers. We had to get all of our gear onto rivers and go up in boats and get off at the end and go into these remote jungle locations. And so it took a lot of people. We were building scaffolding. We probably had a crew of 30 people working for us in Borneo, just getting our equipment moved around. Uh, and it was really hot in Borneo. It was, it was 40 degrees Celsius almost every day and 100% humidity. And it was very tough physical conditions to work in. So, so that was the challenge in a way, was getting a lightweight camera to get up to the height of an orangutan and also to find a way to get into these remote locations. And it just took a lot of, I would call it sweat, sweat and tears uh, to get the footage we got. With IMAX wildlife films in particular, it's really important to pick animals that are going to let you get relatively close to them because we don't have in IMAX the range of zooms and long lenses that you would have in, an, in a normal nature television documentary. We don't have that kind of equipment. It doesn't work that well in IMAX to get something blown up at the end of the day that's on a really, really long, tight lens. So we try to pick stories and animals that we can get close to. And the closer you are to the animal, the more you're going to feel like you're there. You know, you're going to be, you'll be with these animals if you can get the camera to be a meter or two away from them. And that's w why we chose these stories to work with and why we chose these locations, because we knew we could get the camera, in most cases, pretty close to the animals, close enough that you'd feel like you were in those settings. As even the jungle, when you're up high, we've got a camera that's, that's you know, it's 10 meters sometimes, it's three meters, it's you know, whatever distance we could get it to. We tried to get the camera always as close to the animals, so you felt like you were up there with them. You weren't just staring across a long distance at them, you were actually with those animals. And that's why the, the film works as well, because you do feel like you go to these places. I mean, one of the advantages that we had on this film versus other IMAX films that I've made in the past is that we, we had this new digital-based IMAX camera that allowed, it was light, lighter weight, it had uh, 30 minutes of running time on a, on a hard drive, at a, in a, and it's a whole different system when you're working digital versus film. And one of, the, one of the things that happened with the elephants in particular was we got into a situation where we went out to film wild bull elephants, big huge bulls in a herd in, in one of the locations in Kenya, and in amongst the herd, the, the Sheldrick people that were with us saw a tiny baby elephant, which is a totally unnatural situation. Uh, the bulls stay away from the, the cows. Um, the bulls can't obviously feed a young baby. This was a, an elephant that had been separated from its mother for whatever reason. It was, it was on the edge of dying because it needs milk, it needs uh, nourishment, it needs water, it, things that a bull elephant cannot provide. And while we were there filming, the trust, the, the Sheldrick people decided that they had to save this animal and so they basically went into rescue mode and we were able to use that digital camera to capture and go with them as they rescued this animal and took it all the way back on an airplane back to Nairobi. And so it was one of those scenes that, that in the past we wouldn't have been able to do but in this case because we had this, this new digital technology we could actually go and, and capture the entire thing as it unfolded. And it gives a real sense of drama to the film to be there. It's not a reenactment in any way. It's exactly what happened while it was happening. These are at some, on some level wild animals. Even the orphans, they're, they're, they're instinctively wild animals. They're, um, 
animals that you know you don't encounter every day. Um, you don't want to go and, and be close to wild elephants, uh, large elephants, because it's a very dangerous situation in the wild. And orangutans generally would stay away from humans if they could. So a wild orangutan is something you'd never get to see. Or you, very rarely would you see a wild orangutan in, in the wild and be close enough to actually you know, have, have an encounter with it. So, um, so we were always running into situations where we're, you, know, you, you, you let your guard down slightly because you, you're around the keepers, you're around the animals, you get sort of used to being around them. You forget that these are wild animals sometimes. And so occasionally there'd be a situation, especially with orangutans, where they would decide to be mischievous and they might run over and grab something or grab onto you or climb up on your back when you weren't expecting it. And, and you know, these are big, strong animals, so we, you know, constantly have to be on guard that they weren't basically jumping on us. And in case of elephants, we just have to kind of stay out of the way sometimes that they would get rambunctious and there's a whole game of football, soccer that we, we, we were able to film and that those elephants were running like within a meter of the camera and the keepers had to constantly make sure they didn't run us over. So, you know, it, it's one of those situations where you, you relax so much as a filmmaker um, because you're around these animals, but you still have to be, remember that these are, at heart, wild animals. So this, this film is a blend of old and new in a sense that the old IMAX technology is film-based. It's the big IMAX frame. Uh, each frame is almost that large in, in the IMAX 70 mil cameras. And in, in we were shooting this with 3D IMAX cameras, so it means you have two rolls of film going through at once. The camera weighs something like 140 kilos. It's really hard to maneuver and get around. It only has three minutes of film before it runs out and you have to reload, and that takes 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a really cumbersome, ca cumbersome camera to do wildlife behavior with. Then you had the other camera that was developed during the, the development phase of this project. We basically built and prototyped the new version of the IMAX digital camera, which is digital based. So it's a totally different technology. Um, it has 30 minutes on a mag. It weighs somewhere in the order of 25, 30 kilos. Um, it can be handled by one person versus two or three. It can get up onto crane arms that will take uh, lighter weights than the big, the big film camera. Um, and, it, and, it ha and because you have 30 minutes in a magazine, in a, in a drive, you can essentially let it roll at times and get animal behavior you would never get in, with a film camera. So it really helped us to make this film. And one of the best examples of that is there's a scene in this film of an orangutan that's high up in the canopy and, he, and they're always reaching out and grabbing onto branches and sticks and trunks and all that stuff. That's what they do. They swing around in the trees all day. And so this, this particular orangutan, we were filming it, and it swung over toward this big sort of tree trunk, you know, a big tree standing there, and it grabbed onto it. But we didn't know, and the orangutan didn't know, that the tree was about to fall over. It was a rotten tree. And he pulled on the tree, and it let go. And this huge, big tree started to come toward the orangutan and essentially fell over and crashed into the bush right beside the orangutan, almost killed the orangutan. And we were rolling that whole time because this is a digital camera. We've been rolling for two, three minutes, and we were able to keep it rolling while this whole scene happened right in front of us. And it's the kind of thing that um, I think would have been nearly impossible with the film camera to know that you had to keep rolling in that situation when you didn't even know the tree was going to fall over. So there's things that, get, that we got in this film that uh, have never been captured with an IMAX camera before, and, uh, and I think it's one of the reasons this film uh, really works is because we have this really unique footage. What these films do really well, these IMAX, big Omnimax experiences do, is they put you into a situation, they take you to a place that maybe you wouldn't have gone yourself or wouldn't have a chance to go to. And you learn things visually from this film. On the way through, you'll see things that will you'll, you'll stay in your memory bank. There's, of course, information. You'll find out who these ladies are, why they do what they do, what's happening with the animals, why they're orphans, how you rehabil re rehabilitate these animals in the end. So there's a whole bunch of, of course, learning going on, but it's learning that's what it's happen happening secondarily to the entertainment because you will be mesmerized by what you see in terms of the animals and the behavior and the situations, the locations. It's an engrossing kind of film. So you, you will learn to spite yourself, I think, on the way through a lot more than you knew before you entered the film.